Today on Food Journey, I invite two buddies to the Lecky Conservation Center to have some food for thought. Multi-character comedian and MC, Chi Girl, and my favorite trainer, Tony Ekaidem. Let's see what we're serving up today. I think we need to start the ball rolling by discussing how we feel our mind plays a role in terms of the food we eat or the choices that we make about what we eat. You wanna get the ball rolling, Chima? Um, Yeah, I think that um, at the end of the day that it, the battle actually is in your mind because you're struggling with this first and because this is telling you what to do. This is telling you how to feel. This is telling you, this is telling you eat that. This is telling you don't, don't, don't work out today. This is telling you lay in bed another hour. You know what I mean? So this is where the schedule is. This is where the, the direction is. So once we fight the battle and win it in here, then everyone else is good. So yeah, I really think it's important to figure this out. The mental aspect is important. You have to address it. And then the physical aspect, which is the exercises, and then you have the nutritional aspect. I always feel like there's somebody on this shoulder, mm -hmm. there's somebody on this shoulder. Literally, I want to flick off the person who's telling me, you know, just don't bother, just go ahead. And then there's this little angel here saying, no, Sonny, you know what to do. And I want so much to do the right thing. But then, at the end of the day, I end up hating myself for not doing the right thing. So, you know, it's, it's literally torture sometimes, keeping on track with your program. And I can see why so many people start mm -hmm. and then just sort of mentally give up. I mean, Chima, do you, do you ever have the days when in your fitness regime and your healthy eating regime where you just feel defeatist about things? I mean, I think that almost for me, that's almost like every day is a struggle. For me, every single day is a struggle because you're dealing with uh, issues and life and exactly. then you're now like I have to you sometimes you want comfort and your comfort is coming from the food you eat and you're like like stuff will happen in your life you're like I don't want to hear any about weight loss let me just eat my chips or my burger and my fries and be alright and chill that's what you want to do just fries and chill which brings us to a healthy substitute for what yeah. you want to do or what are we really calling it maybe replacing the behavior tony for instance if you want to people who have had problems with drugs and whatnot at the point at which they want to do the thing mm -hmm. that's bad for them replacing the behavior immediately with something with else, something else yes. yeah. um, um how how do you what do you think about that it's it's very interesting you know the um in the comparison to drug abuse yeah. You no, know, that, that comparison is actually what it is. You know, most people do not realize that um, we are all addicted to food. Yeah. Everybody. Some is people say to food. they aren't, but it's the one thing that you need. So no matter what, you are going to have to put food in yeah. your mouth. So, like each day is different. Right. Because you are battling things that you have no control of. Your hunger pains comes from. Um, um, it comes from empty stomach. <laughs> no, it, it comes from the hormones that your body produces. And what you've done is you have conditioned yourself to produce those hormones at certain periods, which is how you know that you are um, right. addicted to food. Oh, yeah. Everybody, like as an adult, you really don't need to eat three times a day. I think when we were younger, we had schedules. So what, you ate breakfast at what time? If you were early to go to school, you ate breakfast before you went to school. So imagine how early we were eating breakfast and in the middle of the day, your lunch and then dinner. Um, but I've, as, as I've grown older, oh, okay. Um, yeah. There's a monkey. Yeah, monkey. Little monkey. Little, 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 little monkey, little my schedule. All right now. Okay, so. The um, monkey wants to know how to lose weight. No, the monkey does not need to know how to lose weight. The monkey needs to go over there. So it's other monkeys in the bushes. I wish. Bye, monkey. Bless you. Hi, monkey. Oh, that's the I'm same the chick monkey. we saw. We even met you. Hey, boo. Are you stalking us, monkey? Monkey Lena? Your husband is over there. I can tell you, a girl. Baby, uh-uh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. This not the place, not the time, not the day. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. I want you to go on, monkey. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. So I've learned anyway. Um, in my adult life, a friend of mine told me once that the best way to look at it is food is fuel. Yes. yes. Food for fuel. So you're not supposed to be using food anyhow. Right. Which means you're not supposed to be abusing food, which means you're not, you're not supposed to just be eating anything you want just because. And I think one of the reasons why we do that is because we don't see adverse effects immediately. You know how like when you say like if you're doing drugs, you start to, you get addicted to it, you start to, you're losing teeth, you're doing this, you're doing that. So somebody that is a drug addict looks somehow to you. But when you're just, you're just fat. You know what I mean? Like, and I hate to say, uh, like, I, I don't like, I've not been, I've never been the point of using all these words. Um, it's not okay, Tony. No, no, no. Okay. What? It's a this private is property. This is the conservation center. Yeah, so let's come conserve somewhere else. Bye, Makelina. Because if Makelina has my show, I'm going to try trouble. I don't, I feel something going to happen. But however, I've already come out of bush to say, Makelina! Me, Balea! Hello! Well, time to move on. But I suspect that there were plenty more monkeys around here. Because of the maintenance going on, we were escorted to a different part of the park by a seasoned park ranger, Mr. Obot. Yes, we are in good hands because, you know, after that monkey scare, you know. How old is this conservation center? How long have you been in Ah, yes, yes, it's for 39 years, 30 years. 30 years. Wow. Uh, Obot, so um, the nice monkey over there, I call her Ramona. Oh. Uh, well, they are actually Mona monkey. That's why. Okay. Okay. So we're naming her Ramona. Yeah, Ramona. Ramona. Yes. Yeah. We named her Ramona. Do we have other wild animals in here? Yes, we have a lot of species of animals, monkeys, antelopes, squirrels, pangolins, crocodiles. But the most frequent one that we can cite are the monkeys. No, what to? You said cobra. Cobra, yes. <laughs> They're friendly. Don't be, don't snake. Be friendly oh, yeah. snake? I've never friendly, met yeah. one. <laughs> who, who has heard of any friendly cobra? I don't understand. <laughs> anyway, all I have to say is I hope that everybody's on quarantine today yeah. in the animal world. Shall yeah. we proceed? The rules are not of We're here, so <laughs> Okay, guys, you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm okay. Ready, guys. I'm ready as I'll ever be. Into the unknown. Mm -hmm. Hey, landlord. <laughs> Our lucky landlord, we are here. We have just come. Please don't look around. Oh, my God. The center is closed today, so we have this beautiful landscape to enjoy. But I have to tell you, it's hot, hot, hot. And it looks like these ants don't mind the heat, though. Right, so we're monkeyless right now. <laughs> For now. You know? So let's talk about the stages of mental development that are needed when you're on a weight loss journey. There's obviously a stage one when you're just getting started. What are the things that we are thinking in our head? Fear. Yes. Um, stage one is to accept the truth, your own reality. Uh-huh. What do you think about that statement? I, I feel like, yes, you have to, of course, realize there is a problem that needs solving. Realize that there is a situation that needs to change be it your habits, be it your lifestyle. You have to tell yourself, okay, I know I need this journey to start. But some people don't do that and you wind up compounding the issue for years and years and years for the simple fact that you won't tell your mind the like truth. The mind. truth. Yeah. I mean, people, people, take on, people take on different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? People take on different um, things for different reasons. Now you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. And that's what I've always been told and been told by someone who did and he said, even if you want a trainer, what do you want to come out of that training session? Great. Why are you having a trainer? Why are you changing your lifestyle? Do you want to be healthy? Do you want to just look good? Do you want to just be thick? Do you want to be thin? Do you, do you, so you have your reason. It's like okay. writing a business plan, plan. that is for fitness. Wonderful. Wellness. Now, there are some people who have short-term goals, and there are some people who have long-term goals. Right. For some people, I just oh, need to... Yeah, you know, all of us. Some people just want to get into that dress this weekend. Yes. 
and they'll do drastic things. I call it the Oscar diet. <laughs> oh, I love it! <laughs> by hook or by crook, honey. <laughs> now, Tony, here's a question for you as a trainer. Somebody comes and says, I want to lose weight. This is a period of time that I, I, I have for my goal. The, I, I'm real, the, my goals are realistic, etc. What is the first thing that you need to work on with that person? Is it just first restrictions, restrictions, or do you actually work on their mind? Oh, yes. Um, it, it's, it's the mind. It's a mind thing for me mm -hmm. because uh, I know that uh, the mind, the body does what the mind tells you to do. But my mind will tell me eat the cake. Yes. And your hand will stretch and, 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 and Thank you. And, and that is your primitive self. Mm -hmm. You've not connected with your higher self. It I takes see. time. So I've been on this journey now for maybe about three weeks. Would you say that that is the danger zone and the point at which somebody could decide, you know what, this is a little bit too hard. How, what does the mind, why does the mind tell us after that three week period that, you know, this is just too... Because the mind is... Uh... The, not trained. The, the, the mind is, the mind is, is a terrible master. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's untrained. Yeah. Like your mind is literally a vagabond just running amok and just behaving in, in a comfortable what way. What she said. Yeah. All right, so we've managed to get past the three-week stage. We're now getting, let's say, onto the next level, the six-week stage. People are starting to compliment you now. Mm. You're starting to feel a little bit more confident about mm. yourself. Maybe you even look a little different in the mirror and you love it. The mirror is now your friend yeah, instead of something is, yeah. that you are avoiding in your bedroom. So, what is the danger then? How do people deal with like, okay, I've been on this for six weeks. Now I'm going to go to that party. Maybe three weeks early, I daren't go anywhere because I was afraid of failure, mm -hmm. afraid of that buffet. Now you do a lot of events. Mm -hmm. You are out there in, on the scene all the time. Mm -hmm. How do you cope with having to be out there and somebody saying, oh, hey, it's a lovely tray yes. of... Um, um, how do you cope? Yeah. I, well, a lot of times... Especially time, when you're out of the country. A lot right. of times... I always ask for, like, there's food coming. Like, I love amalana, I love rice, and rice is a staple food here. Yeah, you know these things, and party food, some of these places, man, <laughs> the food, you'll be like, you enter, you just enter, you're like, hell, hell, I'm in hell, I'm in hell. But, you know, I just, I just substitute. So I'll just say, can really? I have fish? Do you have a can carrot have, stick, please? No, like, like, can I have fish and can I have vegetables? Because there's always vegetables. I said, before you mix it with the mayonnaise, just give me the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Give me fish. Give me my money. Right. Know, those kind of things. And I would, I would eat and then fill up. And thank God I'm always working. So I try not to eat while I'm working. Right. So I would just literally, once I drop the microphone, tell my assistant, oh yeah. Uh -huh. Let's move. I don't, what you eat? No, uh -huh. ma. I've got so somewhere to go. Somewhere to go. So somewhere now, to how go. about the people who are told things like, mm, you're a party pooper. How can you come here? Mm -hmm. You're not eating. You're just and sitting there. It's rude. Yeah, well, people, those people that tell me to do that, I say, you don't like me. Ah. You must not be a good friend. But I have learned that you must get up again. Yeah. Every single time you fall, get up, I fell, okay, own it, take it, hold it to your twist, stand up. And keep going. And keep going. Just like what she said before, uh, apart from that, you take each day as it comes. Yeah. You know, there are some days you see that, oh, I can eat just once. And there are some other days you feel like eating five times. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's going to fluctuate. And then once you recognize the limitations of your body and what you can do, you can push your body just a little bit beyond the threshold. And you'll be so surprised at what you can time. do. Exactly. This has been a great discussion. I've learned a lot from you and it's good that you, you know, it's coming from somebody who everybody can relate to. And Tony, yeah. you've been fantastic in this discussion. Before we go and explore this amazing place, Tony's going to show us one or two little relaxation exercises for when you get anxious about what you're doing. Maybe you're just about to open that fridge and have a fridge and have a good old binge. Before open the fridge and have a binge. <laughs> no, <laughs> that rhymes. But what we're going to relax. do instead is we're going to get relax. you to relax <laughs> and not go for that moment. So Tony, let's show us what we can do. Okay, um, it's a bit of a qigong. Okay, we're going to go do it over there in the clearing. Over there. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Okay guys, I'm going to show you this relaxative exercise for when you have anxiety, when you are angry, when you feel like eating and you think you don't have the strength to carry on. This is going to help you. Okay, ready? Inhale into your tummy. One, keep going. Two, three. Hold it. One, two, three. Exhale. One, two, three. 
Well, that was relaxing and great fun. Now I'm ready to cook. Coming? Well, that was a lot of fun, sharing the afternoon with Tony and Chioma. What a laugh, and they shared so much. But reality has hit home since then, and we all find ourselves confined for reasons beyond our control. For some of us, the lack of daily distraction and confinement means more struggling with our food intake. So I'm gonna show you a couple of healthy options I go for whenever I come to that difficult food fork in the road. In my stay-at-home shop, I made sure to buy a supply of fresh fruits and vegetables and less unhealthy snacks. I'm gonna make two things today. But first things first, let's wash our hands thoroughly. They call it a chopped salad because it's chopping up all your favorite things, all your favorite healthy things, and that's what I'm gonna do. So let's get to chopping. I love raw cabbage. It's a real chew in any salad. Thin slices are best. So it's a pleasure rather than a chore to eat. Followed by some cucumber. Some people like to keep the skin on and some not. But I'm creating different shapes and textures to vary the mouthfeel for this salad. See the seeds here? I'm going to remove those. Let's cut them three ways. C cuts, chopped, and sliced with the skin on for our garnish. One veggie, three styles. For the carrots, I've already chopped those up before you guys got here. So let's just add them. Done. Gotta create some fun in these times. This is beetroot. An unusual vegetable really. It's got this beautiful bright red interior. Now I had only had this cooked. I wasn't too keen. But the minute I had it raw, oh everything changed. So this is going in. Beetroot grows underground. You can eat it raw or cooked. In the Ukraine it's all about borscht or beetroot soup. Not my cup of tea, but this bleeding veggie will add sweetness and color to everything in the salad. Let's slice and chop this green apple for some more sweet and tart. I've got time on my hands, like all of us now, so I'm relaxing and taking my time with this one. But last, and not least, our little tomato. Then we're gonna be ready to mix it up, make a great dressing, and serve. And all my garnishes are ready. Mmm, look at that. Sonia's chopped veggie salad. <laughs> Done. Now let's make some lovely honey mustard dressing for our salad in a handy jar.
So here's your chopped salad and the honey mustard dressing with Greek yogurt. Don't you just love it? And you can keep this in the fridge for 10 to 12 days. Fancy something sweet? Try my perfect parfait. I'm gonna save that lovely salad for later on, maybe for lunch. But right now, my craving is telling me I want something sweet and I want something fun. And I think you'll find all of those elements in my perfect parfait. I've got all my favorite fruits already chopped up here and ready to go. So let's start with layering. We're starting off with the perfect parfait glass. Something wide, something you can easily get a spoon into. What's up first? Pineapple. Now some mango. Well, it's my favorite time, time to taste. And I'm gonna try my perfect parfait in the garden. Let's go. So from Food Journey, it's a very warm goodbye. Stay safe, everybody. God bless Nigeria and God bless the world. I'm gonna enjoy my parfait now with some lovely homegrown music. Stay safe everyone and see you next time.